All right, everyone, it's hilarious how easily amused some people on the so-called left are, like people who are like supposedly on the left. It's very funny to see them totally cucked and sold out with regards to the drug war, which is what they are. So they get like, they do the soy face thing and they jump up and down and, and screech with joy when Bernie Sanders comes out and says, well, we should be legalizing marijuana on the federal level. Well, shit, 10 fucking years ago, I was arguing for that and legalizing heroin, but it's funny to see Bernie Sanders try to take credit for a social movement he was never on the forefront of. This is a little bit like uh, Obama crying tears of joy and expressing his great and deep reverence for the gay community after having been a civil union Democrat when he was first in the Senate. Oh, I changed my mind. Now I back gay rights now that everybody else does. You know, 10 years ago, I was all for civil unions, just don't call it marriage. Hillary Clinton doing the same thing. Now you've got the drug war, and what's happened is that a bunch of left-wing politicians, uh, mostly they're, they're partisan, they're not ideologically liberal in the, in the classical sense. Uh, they've come out to say, well, we need to legalize marijuana. It's not really a gateway drug. And yeah, neither are shrooms. Yeah, you've got two cities that have legalized psilocybin now, but by and large it remains illegal. It's an innocuous substance. It's not particularly addictive. It's not highly dangerous. It has definite medical benefits. The drug scheduling system in this country is wrong. It is not based on science. It's based on the opinions of people that in some cases lived and died over a half century ago, back before science was truly modern in the sense that we have it now. It's like looking at policies now. There are things that we do currently in the political arena, in the socio-political sense, in diplomacy and everything else that a hundred years from now will look antiquated. One of the worst examples of this is the drug war. It's not prefaced on any form of common sense. We've got a drug scheduling system that's all topsy-turvy. Marijuana is on the highest schedule despite the fact that it's not chemically particularly addictive. It can be habituating, not addictive in the chemical sense. Um, it does have medical benefits. It is not established as being harmful. Marijuana, be, be beyond any other material you can smoke, you could take pieces of paper and smoke those too and potentially get buildup of residue in your lungs. You could potentially have problems. Marijuana is not particularly pernicious. It's, it's certainly a lot less addictive and problematic than alcohol or tobacco, which remain fully legal for any adult to ingest. Um, you've got some of the psychedelics they fall into the same category. So the first thing is scientifically the drug war makes no sense. Second is just pragmatic. Let's look at the cost in terms of money and lives. It's not worth it. Drug use rises as the drug war is, wa is waged. We can look and see, we can look at crime statistics, we can see that it doesn't work. And we're paying out billions and billions of dollars a year and it's costing lives because some, some group of cops is sent to a house it's been reported that they are snorting cocaine. They bust down the door. They find out it's not a cocaine house, but the owner thinks he's being robbed, opens fire. Three cops are dead along with the homeowner. You know, it, 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 it contributes to abuse by inner city police forces too. It inflames the race debate in the inner cities. Oh, well, this white cop killed this black dude for having a joint. Causes problems, becomes a big international fucking pile of shenanigans. And then you have, on the economic side, the fact that it simply, it's cost so much, you, you, who do you think pays for that? The taxpayers. It's funny watching conservatives say that we should keep marijuana illegal especially. But then we have some idiot sellout like Bernie Sanders pretend like he's hippy trippy granola crunching. Yeah, I smoke weed all the time. No, you don't. Have you ever, have you ever even proudly proclaimed the, the time you used a bong? <laughs> it's really funny. Uh, I used other, you know, I haven't used anything in almost a decade now. Um, but it didn't screw me up too bad. The one substance that did manage to put me in the hospital was totally legal at the time. And that wouldn't have happened if the drug war hadn't been going on. Most of these substances, no, they're not addictive. No, I know what addiction is like. I was a smoker for years. I've struggled with alcoholism. Those are addictions. I took psychedelics of various kinds. Never felt remotely the same. There's some habituation potentially that goes on. Most of it, though, is spiritual experimentation. Now, I know there's a difference between approaching it from the spiritual angle, exploring, like, your mind and stuff. I know that the psychonaut slash sort of shamanistic angle is a little different from, hey, man, I'm getting high, it's fun. Okay, maybe so. People do dumb things, especially when they're young. That shouldn't be a reason to throw them in federal prison. And that's the other part, the, the human quality, the social impact 
of literally breaking apart someone's life for having used drugs makes no fucking sense. It, it scars them for life in the most literal sense. Meanwhile, we have Trump coming out. He's said, well, I don't care if you have medical marijuana. Yeah, that should be legal. By the way, if the states legalize it, it's a state's issue. Fuck it, I don't care. Trump is further ahead than Bernie Sanders on this issue, especially with regards to the reform end for prisons and things like that. What's Trump managed to pass? Comprehensive prison reform. Bipartisan. He got Republicans to sign on. Yeah, we're going to let a bunch of people out and, and scrub their sentences. Who The only crime that they're guilty of is they had a joint 20 years ago and then still on their record as a felony because people back then were unenlightened and, and uncivilized with regards to the treatment of their fellow human beings for something as simple as smoking fucking hash. Uh, Donald Trump got that done. Bernie Sanders didn't. Bernie Sanders has been in Congress for a very long time. He never pushed these issues. All of a sudden, he wants to make it one. No, he wants more young voters to be attracted to him. Hey, vote for me. I'll let you get high. Well, doesn't... Dude, Bernie, half the population lives in a state where it's already legal or decriminalized anyway. Much like here in your home state of Vermont. Or your other home state of New York. Did they uh, decriminalize? I think they decriminalized... Uh, minor possession, if I remember correctly. And it's like, at this point, even the police forces in most other states, by and large, they non-enforce, which is good. By the way, they did this in Vermont for a while. It was illegal, but the police wouldn't really do anything. They'd just take and confiscate and be like, get it off the streets. Don't let us see you smoking it. Don't make us smell you smoking it because we might get called to raid your home. Otherwise, you know, hush, hush, you know, bye, have fun, little Jimmy. That's the way it should be. Police officers need to use more discretion. The problem is that in inner city forces, especially some overzealous police commissioners, start saying, well, we need to, we need to, to uh, grab more people off the streets. We've got crime, therefore arrest more people. We've got that in Vermont. There was, I won't use his name. There's a police officer, I think he's retired now, that used to be notorious for like uh, setting up his little speed trap at certain places not far from here. And he was a real, like, like, hard ass like he won awards for, for catching people for speeding he was known as a hard ass and this is because of like like some sort of system that rewarded you if you got netted more people that were uh, speeding and so he would nail them like three or four every day probably and he like got kudos for that and it was really funny but the thing is like if someone's going two two miles an hour over the speed limit there's no real compelling reason to bother stopping them oh but he would because he wanted to get that, he wanted to nail you. He wanted to get you a ticket so that he could uh, rack up the numbers. Uh, you know, it's not his fault. He's being incentivized to do such a thing. Ultimately, we need to look at the police commissioners around this country and see if there's a problem with the bureaucratic end, because it's not the beat cop's problem. If I was some beat cop and I'm getting call, called in at 2 a.m. to raid a house because someone smelled marijuana, I'd feel pretty shitty about that. I'd feel sorry for the people that are getting raided, and I'd probably also fear for my life. I'm like, well, what if it's a wrongful call? They smelled it, but it was next door. We're walking into a house where some crazy person with a lot of assault rifles is living, you know, and they think that we're trying to steal their gun collection or their, their colloidal silver uh, uh, chemistry lab, and so they open fire or they've booby-trapped their house or something. Bernie Sanders, oh, we should, uh, so people should be able to smoke weed. Well, yeah, they should. The Libertarian Party stressed that in the 70s, back when Bernie Sanders was too busy smoking the occasional joint to really worry about the policy side of the drug war. And, yeah, and he's just as much a sellout. Where's, where's his support for, what is it, Denver and uh, Oakland legalizing psilocybin? Who's trying to legalize mescaline? Who's trying to legalize LSD? Why shouldn't these substances be usable by people? They should be legal. There's no compelling reason to keep them illegal. They're not highly addictive. They're not in normally acquired quantities, particularly harmful. They do have established, especially mental health benefits. The drug scheduling doesn't apply. It is wrong. It's already, it's, it's illegal for the drug scheduling system to exist as it currently does. It violates its own laws. It's based on a bunch of bullshit. Oh, and on a bunch of reefer madness bullshit and acid craze. People, if you take LSD, you will stare at the sun until your eyes drip out of their sockets. No, that probably won't happen. I remember the salvia scare. The, the modern equivalent for my generation is the salvia scare. I'm, I'm a little bit too young for the ecstasy scare. That comes sort of early, mid-90s. I was still little. And then they had the inhalant thing. That was a micro scare. That salvia really was the big thing. Early 2010s especially. And they were like, there was this one story. 
And I can remember this. I remember seeing it in the, in the paper. It was a story about some kid, like, he took a charcoal grill and built an altar in his living room because he was high as balls on salvia. And it, no, it turns out that was a story, a totally misconstrued story that had been based through se- I, I, it was like playing telephone. It had to have gone through several iterations before then. I can't trace it, and I'm not going to spend my time. The initial story was that some depressed teen who happened to self-medicate with weed as well, by the way, nobody blamed that, uh, had salvia on him when he killed himself by turning the car on in his garage. They found salvia on him at the time. There's no evidence that he had smoked it. There was no evidence it led to his death, and, and it probably didn't, because if you're high on salvia, you probably can't turn a car on. If you've ever used it, you know, you know why. Um, that's bullshit. He was already he was clinically depressed. He decided to kill himself. The fact is that just because someone chooses to kill themselves and happens to smoke weed or salvia or something doesn't mean the drug was responsible. Co- correlation and causation begin to break down because of bad drug scheduling policies. They're trying to cover their asses on their own stupidity. People should use marijuana. Yeah, okay, Bernie, why don't you make some marijuana ice cream and leave it to people that are actual psychonauts or former psychonauts to whom we should be the ones determining drug policy. Those of us who fucking use these substances responsibly. Again, the only reason I got fucked up was a legal substance. Spice, JWHO18, the free-based powder. It was totally legal at the time. They've, I think they've outlawed that specific one now, but they've got other research chemicals. You go into the seedy part of the neighborhood, you go to the gas station, yeah, they still sell herbal smoke blends. It's just a different chemical each time. One, you know, they, they ripped apart, they gutted the Analog Act because of constitutional issues, and instead of trying again with something that made more sense, they just abandoned it, I guess. So they outlawed a few brands of spice, and that's pretty much it. I remember some stuff called Pink Moon that said, well, we don't have research chemicals in it. I still wonder what I was putting in my body. Who fucking even knows at this point? Could have been any substance I was smoking at the time. Uh, it could have been pretty bad. By the way, don't use those, uh, the, the, the legal weed branded bullshit, the, the cannabis uh, junior, the one in the little foil packs, it looks like a condom till you open it up and there's like incense inside. Don't use that shit. Uh, it'll fuck you up, trust me. They, they, they haven't even properly explored the human impact of some of these substances. They could cause cancer for all I know. They could cause cancer, they could cause epi- they could cause literally anything. We don't really have a way of knowing. People like me were kind of used as real life human guinea pigs, unfortunately, causing disastrous effects in parts of the population. Uh, not saying that I deliberately encourage this, but in such a situation, wouldn't it make more sense just to smoke weed? You know, even where it's illegal, it's probably less harmful. It's less harmful to get locked up in the county jail overnight, probably, than it is to smoke some of the spice blends. That's about all. Peace out.